Hello, everyone. Welcome. So I got in a little spat with Michael Ian Black today, um, but I wanted to hit on a larger point, which is the left in general looks at you like you are horrible filth. Now, that's quite the claim. And to measure a, a claim as great as that, you would you would need certain methods. And one of those methods is seeing the followers of the person perpetuating that narrative that you are awful, you are the other, you are sickening, you are the filth of this world. Now, this guy has 2.18 million followers. Another metric you can use is Hillary Clinton. How many people voted for her? And she called half the country deplorable. Or was it a quarter? Was it half a Trump space or was it all a Trump space deplorable? And that, at the very least, means that they are okay with the character onslaught. And they may even agree with it. Now, to see if they agree with it, it'd be best to reference some surveys of these demographics, but since that's not available, you can take other websites, and you can see their traffic, and you can, you can take certain articles that are, that are horrible and say that the other side are just these racist monsters that love fascism. And you can see that with The Root. The Root has millions of followers. On Facebook, it's like an entire army agrees with him. You have Salon. You have Vice. You even have some CNN, MSNBC that make characters attacks. New York Times makes character attacks. Hollywood. If you take every person like Michael Ian, ba Ian Black, there's going to be some overlap in the followers. But in general... These people all think very similar, because insofar as you think different, they will cast you out. They will label you as another. They'll label you as a right-wing bigot, as we can see evidenced by Jordan Peterson's constant attacks that he's been going through lately. Now let's get to this Twitter conversation with Michael Ian Black, who comes off reasonable if you actually get to talking with him. Um, but his, his, every, every view he has is unreasonable. Every view he has is incorrect. He has an incorrect worldview. And when you have a worldview like his, you're able to justify labeling large swaths of, of the population, um, as horrible people. So Michael starts off with, this is a great column. The only exception I would make is that Blow believes Trump stole the Republican Party, where, I, as I think, they wanted to be thrown into the briar patch of baby fascism. Now, as Michael Ian Black later describes, baby fascism is sort of what he describes as kind of a, a diluted version of regular fascism, um, basically. That's what he means by that. He doesn't think that Trump will send us into outright fascism. He calls it baby fascism. Which sounds more like an out to me, but whatever. So, I say, keep it up with your disingenuous labeling of people that might actually like his policy, none of which is fascist. You are a psychopathic radical. You are so far in your bubble of orthodoxy that you can't see that normal, good people might agree with this policy and not be bad. He says, cool, which policies of his do you agree with that won't, seen to their logical conclusions, lead to baby fascism, as I described. Now, I, I give him a list. Right to try, the Gorsuch judicial pick, lower taxes, withdrawal from the Iran deal, withdrawal from the climate accord, foreign policy, all things to have disagreements about, if you want. I don't have disagreements. I think that's good freaking policy. Um... But the right likes. Border policy, same thing. And I disagree with you, the it'll lead to fascism conspiracy. He corrected me. I said baby fascism. And yes, we do disagree. Having a strong border policy. Now, this is where, when you talk to a leftist, I don't know if they do this intentionally, but it always works out that 
they end up making the discussion as convoluted as possible. It makes it hard to pinpoint their arguments. Um, but since I'm in this setting, I can go ahead and address each argument um, without having to, to balance the, the platform of Twitter conversations. It's just a different environment. Now I can address them. Having a strong border policy, in quotations, is one thing. Its implementation is another. What we are seeing right now is a fascistic response to a mostly non-existent immigration problem. A problem which is rooted entirely in race. Now, this, this premise... I mean, how, how many things are wrong with what he just said? First of all, it's not rooted in race. Um, it's rooted in certain demographics that are proved dangerous. Certain Islamic radical countries that are deemed dangerous. And if, if you don't think that's the case, and that he's just painting a broad brush, you're going to have to explain the other Islamic countries and the other Arab countries that are still allowed to come. Referring to the old travel ban. Now, if you're talking about the Mexican problem being rooted in race, it's not. It's rooted in the law of our country. The law which states you need to be, you need to go through the proper channels to be a legal citizen. But all of that be damned in his worldview. What we are seeing right now is a fascistic response. Now, the only thing I could think of is that thing that came out when they were separated, uh, when they separated kids from their parents. And that policy has been in place. What that policy was, I believe, is, is I don't know, someone was trying not to punish the kids for the parents or something, and it ended up that the, the kids had to go stay with... Uh, some of the parents' family members, or something. Anyways, the picture that was circulating that all the celebrities retweeted was was taken during the Obama administration. So they all deleted it. So that's awkward. So that's a long-existent policy that can't be put on the present Republican Party or the president. So, so he's wrong in the entire worldview, how he views things is just just incorrect. So the Gorsuch pick itself was a precedent-setting overturning of norms. Now, if norms is judicial activism, then I agree. And if that was the norm, I think it should be overturned. Because Gorsuch just goes he he's a he's a nonpartisan judge. He interprets the law how it's supposed to be interpreted. But that's not what... That's presumably not what Michael Ian Black is saying as evidenced by his whole platform. Um, he's saying it was... It was just a, a pick that was out of this world, that was crazy, that, that turned over the norms of, of what we expect judges to be. You can only view that if you are in a left-wing bu bubble. Gorsuch has an impeccable record, nonpartisan, just interprets the law as it is, not as his I ideology deems. So he's wrong on that premise. While, while I agree that the concept of lower taxes is non-fascistic, in practice funneling trillions to corporations without investing in lower and middle classes. Now, lowering taxes does not take, you are not funneling trillions to organizations by not stealing their money, okay? Here, let's not be, here, I won't be radical about it. You are not funneling money to organizations by not taxing them money. That doesn't make any sense. A tax is taking their money, reallocating it, if you have faith in government. I'm, I'm trying to be as generous as possible. It's reallocating the money to, to a different place. You're not funneling money to giant organizations. Now, if organizations and government have partnerships, like how the government gives Google money for, I don't know, diversity, 
hypothetically. I think I heard something about it one time, but I'm going to say hypothetically, uh, so I don't uh, slander them. I don't know. Uh, look it up yourself. But that would be called crony capitalism, and Republicans aren't for that. But that's not what he's talking about. He was in the context of taxes. So his whole premise on that is wrong too. Okay, it's just everything about when you have a worldview as warped and convoluted as Michael Ian Black's, you're able to justify labeling the other people as horrible. And when does he do that? He does that. He says, I think they wanted to be thrown into the briar patch of baby fascism. That means they're bad people. The Republican Party and the millions of people that make it up are bad people. Now, I would ask you to look at history, and and this is a real problem. As I discussed at the beginning of the video, news outlets, celebrities, uh, prominent professors, you name it, everyone is labeling the right wing as some horrible group. And it's not even all the right wing. It's a little right of Stalin, and you're going to be labeled as horrible people, as he just did. And it's proven time and time again. So this is a huge problem. And I would like you to take that information I give you at the beginning of the video and combine it with historical references. What have people, what have groups, what have countries been able to justify on the basis of labeling their opposition as horrible? What did Nazi Germany get away with by labeling the Jews a certain way? What did the Young Turks get away with by, by labeling the Armenians a certain way, okay? Or the, the Malays people with, I think, the Chinese, okay? All throughout history, in order to dehumanize your opponent, you got to make them an evil bastard. Because if they're evil bastards, well, then it's fair game. If you do something to them, if you take away their rights, if you if you even up to killing them, it's justified, right? Because they're horrible, indecent people. And that's where we're heading. They're heading more so in Europe. We have the Constitution, and it's a lot stronger than I thought. So, so here's with his incorrect worldview that leads to the ability to label his opposition as he does. It's only because his worldview is so warped. Now, not only furthers, so lowering taxes, not only furthers income inequality, which we are seeing, but also concentrates powers in the hands of the already minute political and business class, which is actually a precondition uh, for fascism. So maybe without a constitution, and maybe if they were part of the government, but they're not. This is free market. You are economically illiterate. So every single thing he tries to tell me. Now, number one is convoluted. So you already lost the, the point. Number, number two, everything is incorrect. So you lost it double. It's like trying to stick your hand in a tank of whatever and trying to find a little substance. It's just not going to happen. It's, he, he convoluted everything. I'm not saying we are headed towards a fascistic country, and I don't believe that. But we are ambling towards an authoritarian model a la Turkey, Russia, Hungary, and all the policies and precedents you cited will get us there, including breaking foreign policy deals. Now, in order to believe this, you would have to believe the Iran deal and the Paris deal are good. You would have to believe that everything I stated up there would lead to fascism. It's just absurd. So the Iran deal just gave Iran cover to make nuclear weapons. And to prepare for that, other countries in the Middle East worried about Iran becoming the superpower in the region formed kind of an alliance with Israel, which ended up working out for Trump just fine. But the Iran deal put 
President Obama as the worst president in the history of the United States as per Dr. Soul. So, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not appealing to authority. You can go see his arguments. His arguments are pretty sound. Make up your own mind. So, it's just absurd. Where, where next to Russia because of policies like a judicial pick and pulling out of horrible deals like the Paris Accord where we were paying most of it and getting nothing from it and it has had zero results? Yeah, I, I don't think so. So, once again, wrong on his premise. But you can't go through all that when you're trying to point out your labeling. So my point is he's labeling his opposition. I can't go through all of this, dig through all of this crap, because then I'll get lost in the conversation and I'll end up losing. So he said, by the way, I call that authoritarian model baby fascism, which is why I use the term. I was like, not only do I disagree they will get us there, I disagree with your assessments of the situations. Why can't I disagree with you without being a bad person? And that is what is implied if you think an entire demographic want, wants baby fascism. He said, I understand that we disagree, and I hope, truly, that you are right, and I am wrong. Look, look how this anointed individual looks down on the benighted like me. Oh, oh, you're, you're so merciful. I hope, truly, in my heart of hearts, that I can save you from the Trump administration. That I can lead you to the light. And everything that is holy, you can, you can just tell that they view everyone else as benighted and they are anointed. Um, the reason I question the motives of the demographic you describe is simple. They are exclusionary. Trump's entire campaign and presidency has been one of the most, one of mostly racial resentment. Okay, so again, this isn't true at all. If you're talking about the Mexicans, it's not true. If you're talking about Islam, it's not true. If you're talking about certain countries in the Middle East, it's not true. If you're talking about blacks, it's certainly not true. Um, just, just no evidence to back up that statement. And if you have a worldview like that, it's easy to label your opposition as other. And when you label your opposition as other and morally bad, there's no limit to what you can do to them. There's no limit because they're the scum of the earth. You made them the scum of the earth. So whatever you do to them will be justified in your warped head. And that's that's what has happened in history many times. Um, so that's a lie. Not a purposeful lie. It's just incorrect. Here, that's better. It's incorrect. That resentment also extends to gay and trans people. Trump, during his campaign, held up the LGBT flag, okay? I don't think it does. I don't think the trans people either, unless you view the, the bathroom incident as just some, some horrible thing. You're going to have to show me the evidence that resentment from Trump was against trans people. You're going to have to show me a quote. Show me some evidence. Um, now, the reason his view on trans is wrong even if Trump did have policies against trans. The reason that's wrong is because men are men and women are women, and in our current culture, we are basically celebrating mental illness. Throughout history, it has been known that men are men and women are women, and gender is associated with sex. Within the past couple years in so-called social sciences, where they start with incorrect premises and proceed to do a fake scientific journal on on this this issue um apparently we have as many genders as the brain can think up and we have to be supportive of them living in denial and delusions um sex differences is so much more than just penis and vagina it's also hormones it's also the way we think the way we see there are differences it's just different it's not bad and and to the people suffering from gender dysphoria i feel for them and i'm sorry and if there's anything i can do to to help sure and if the doctor has assessed them thoroughly and they decided that their quality of life will be better with a gender reassignment sur surgery fine i'm not a doctor 
But to pretend and to celebrate trans people is is the current status quo, and it's incorrect. So once again, his premise, incorrect. Definitely incorrect on gays, even if you disagree with, with my trans breakdown. It's definitely incorrect on gays. His policies foster that resentment. You're going to have to show me evidence. His language, so claim after claim after claim after claim convoluted it. No evidence at all. No citations. Now, I get it's a Twitter discussion, but this is how, this is how they win and this is how they stay in power. They make it impossible to support him to support the worst of our national character. You cannot separate his language from his policies. You can separate some language from some policies. And some you don't have to. And what if you don't? And you can. If the policy is good, but Trump tweets at 3 a.m. something stupid, you can say, oh, I really like that policy, but Trump's an idiot. What's wrong with that? So that's incorrect. Everything he says is incorrect because his worldview is wrong. Does that make you a bad person? I don't know and wouldn't presume to say. Now, he wouldn't presume to say. But this contradicts what he said at the beginning. He labeled the other people as bad, as wanting a type of baby fascism, as them lusting over it, essentially. That means you're bad. But he wouldn't presume to know if I'm bad as an individual. He'll just presume to know that millions of individuals that that make up the Republican Party are bad. You see how this isn't working in his head? Very, very successful individual. Not a damn clue in this world. Yes, in general, I think the GOP wanted an authoritarian and racist leader as evidenced, evidenced by the fact that that's what they got. Okay. Um... So, oh, it's so warped and so wrong. Okay, so first of all, he's not an authoritarian racist leader. He can't be authoritarian because of the mechanisms we have in place. The only thing you can argue is there's too much, too much power with um, presidential, whatever you call them, where they sign policies into law. Now, that was abused by probably the last two or three presidents. So that's not on Trump either. And it, it hardly qualifies as an authoritarian regime. And a racist leader. Trump is not racist. He's stupid. There's a difference. So he's wrong on those two fronts. And then he's wrong that that means that is that why they voted for it. He said it's evidence because that's what they got. So he's wrong about that's what they got, and then he's wrong that one is a causal effect to the other. That, that the GOP can't... I mean, Germany, when Hitler took over, he had to do things... Hitler had to take... He had to do certain things in secret because the the public view on it would be so awful that his regime couldn't handle the repercussions, so he would lie like uh certain invasions he would lie about he would he would say they attacked them first and they had to defend themselves so those people didn't vote hitler in power so he could exterminate the jews and start a world war so so your premise that they voted on an authoritarian and racist leader because that's what they want because that's what they got is wrong even if Trump was those things, they could have voted thinking he stood for other things that aligned with them. So that's nonsense as well. And then I say also Trump is an authoritarian, which goes back to more of our disagreements on assessing the situation. But this is about as productive as it will get, and I have to go back to work. I do appreciate the conversation, and then he liked the tweet. So... So basically, I couldn't, I couldn't siphon through all that garbage. Every single post was just garbage, evidenceless. Is that a freaking word? It lacked evidence. It lacked any basis in reality. And I can't get lost in that because then I lose track of the actual conversation, and then I'll just look like garbage. So 
There we go. Michael Ian Black's discussion. Make no mistake, this is how the left, en masse, thinks, thinks about their opposition. And that's a very dangerous thing if they get power. If this is the public sentiment from the left that the right people are bad, horrible, authoritarian, fascists, if that's the view on the left, why wouldn't they be justified in putting us in camps? Why wouldn't they be justified in systematically destroying us? I mean, we're horrible, awful fascists after all. You got to get rid of the threat. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying it's so dangerous. People that have an incorrect worldview, like Michael Ian Black, it's so dangerous because it's happened so many times in history where you label your opposition like that and bad things follow. Have a mediocre day.